welcome everybody to Surprisingly Relatable, where we bring you fun and realistic pro tips, knowledge, and hacks you can use for real to build win-win relationships and make work-life balance a reality. My name is Holly Burby, and each week I'll share with you a thought, story, or self-awareness shortcut that will help you to get unstuck, reconnect to your significance, and get focused and clear so you can relate to the people you care about the most. I truly believe that if we want to live a life of purpose and passion, it's time we put away the fake nicey nice and get to the root of how we can actually connect with each other in our homes and communities. That is how we can all succeed and move toward what we each want most. So if you're ready to be surprisingly relatable and evoke positive change that supports uplifts and inspires you and others in the world, you're in the right place. Let's get started. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Today, I want to share with you why serious conversations don't work, thus titling this episode, Why Talking About It Doesn't Work. You may even be surprised by the title to begin with, but this phrase, well, I talk to them about it, or we've had conversations about it before, or I feel like I've had this conversation with them or this talk with them over and over again and nothing is changing. Do you relate to this? Because you may feel this way in a personal relationship, like with your kids or your significant other or with a parent. And likely you may also feel the same about your workplace, a corporate environment, or if you own a, or run a business, or if you are in a management or a leadership role in your company, if you feel like you have talked to people over and over again and it is not working, let's talk about why that is. Let me point out some things that might support you in discovering why talking about it is ineffective and it doesn't work. The first thing I want to say is most people, when they say I talk to them about it or we had a serious conversation about it, everybody has a different meaning for what that actually looks like. Just to point something out to someone that you don't like or to take note of out loud or in a meeting or in an email or in a quick mention that this thing over here is ineffective or inefficient and not where we want to go with the goal, pointing something out is not a conversation. Pointing something out or saying, I don't like this, or this is not working for me, or when you say this, it hurts my feelings, or when you did this action, it made the, (laughs) the workings of the team not go the way that we want it to go. The first main point here, is if you point something out to someone, that's not a conversation and that's not talking about it. And depending on that person and the way that you deliver it, they may hear that as constructive criticism. They might hear it as even constructive feedback and they may take the initiative to shift their actions um, pro, like in a in a positive direction or more toward what you want the situation to be like. But then you also have people who will immediately, when you point something out to them, they go to the defense. They become immediately defensive. And in home life, they likely may say something as to why they're defending themselves. But if you are in a professional situation and someone is talking to you, quote unquote, (laughs) about or pointing out to you why something isn't working, you may become defensive But because you're in a workplace and let's say your manager says this to you or your boss or your business partner, you may not become defensive out loud in conversation. You may just say something like, okay, got it and moving on, but you may harbor some emotion or frustration or annoyance with that person. So the first part of why talking about it doesn't work is because people are just running around pointing out what they don't like. And there isn't an actual back and forth dialogue or conversation about it. So if you notice that you are the person who is pointing things out to others and expecting that person to take the initiative to change on their own or to shift something on their own, 
this is your wake up call and your your invitation to stop doing that. <laughs> like stop doing that and let's enter a dialogue that can get us toward where we want to go. That's the first thing I want to get out of the way. Another reason why talking about it or having these serious conversations is not working is because even if the situation that's not working is pointed out and then let's say the two of you do have a sit down a back and forth conversation or dialogue about why this thing or this action or this result displeases you let's say the two of you do talk about potential solutions for it somebody apologizes if necessary there are options put on the table of how this situation could be handled differently let's say the two of you do have a dialogue back and forth Okay, we could do this or you could do that. You might even point it out to them and then you tell them or give them suggestions on how you want it to look. The reason I say this is ineffective or why conversations like this don't work though is because there's a vital component of that talk, of that conversation that you likely may be leaving out if you find the result that you're looking for never comes. And the component of the conversation is an agreement. Just having a conversation about it, pointing out something, mentioning how you want it to go, that does not guarantee that the person on the receiving end is in full agreement and on board with making those shifts. And they may not be on board because they don't agree that that's the right action to take, but they also may not be on board because they don't understand what you're saying. Your communication may not be detailed enough or clear or specific enough that they can take that action. So they may hear you, they may be listening to you, but again, that doesn't mean that they understand. And most importantly, again, it doesn't mean that they agree to it and are on board. So how do we take these situations and make a conversation or quote talking about it work for us. Tip number one, when you have a conversation with this person, make sure that you have the right time to do this because sometimes we can just look at a person or look at their schedule or look at their mannerisms on the surface and think, oh, they're not doing anything. They're not busy. And while they may not physically be out and about doing something, they in that moment may be really focused on another thought or another project. Now, you may not be like this. You might be able to allow people to interrupt you at any time and you can roll with it, but not everyone's like that. So it's important that when you want to have this type of feedback conversation to come up with a solution that you ask the person, hey, is this a good time for us to have a conversation about some improvements that we could make? And that person then has the ability to say, uh, no, I'm in the middle of something or give me 10 minutes or maybe tomorrow, but make sure if they're if in this moment, the time is not right for them at least make sure that the two of you have a day and a time specifically that you can come back to the conversation. Because if one of you just says, well, we'll talk about it later, that can make the person who has a grievance or something they want to bring up feel like they're being rejected or put off. But if you do table it to later, put a day, put a time on it. I know it's not very (laughs) in in like a personal home life especially like in a work situation that makes sense that people would say let's table it to tomorrow we'll have a conversation about it at one o'clock etc but at home it it doesn't sound you know really really cute romantic sexy whatever where you're like uh let's table it for later and we'll talk about it at 9 p.m uh, it doesn't sound like <laughs> it sounds almost too serious But I promise you, having specificity on when you can talk about it will ensure that both of you come to the table knowing the intention of the conversation, which in this case is to make improvements upon something in the relationship or something in the operations of the business or the household. You come to the conversation ready and willing and open to listen and also likely to come up with a solution and everyone will be focused because they're mentally prepared and not distracted by other things. 
Tip number two of how to make these conversations work for you is to recognize that the agreement is the objective. You want to ensure that, yes, you point out where you want something to be different, more efficient, more effective, but it's really, really important that at the end of the conversation, you have a yes from everyone that is involved. And again, for some people, especially in household operations, a lot of my clients, a lot of my students, they think that this entire conversation format that I'm describing is overkill. People will say things like, well, I should just be able to tell them that they need to do X, Y, Z, or they should speak to me or talk to the kids in this particular way. They should just get it and they should just do it. And why do I have to keep saying it over and over and over again? But the bottom line is you can mention it until you're blue in the face. You can, quote, talk to them about it till you're blue in the face. But until you have a yes from that person, an agreement from that person, you're all wasting time and energy and increasing the amount of frustration or feeling like what you want to have happen is inefficient and ineffective. When we're in the workplace environment, it's far more likely that we will have these conversations and wait for everyone to be on board and give that yes. But like I've said before in my episodes, I'm committed to giving you these tips and tricks and tools and hacks that are going to support you both in a corporate environment, an executive environment, place of employment, et cetera, and also transfer to your family life. We've got to stop segmenting how we do things at home compared to in the workplace because at home you know, we, we put this idea that home is supposed to be more go with the flow and it shouldn't be so structured and it should, but that works. Structure is effective. That is why businesses run. That is why profits are had and profits are made. And so in your home life, if you feel like you're not getting anywhere, it could be a sign that structure is missing. So use this tip, use this trick, use this tool Again, number one, make sure when you have this conversation with somebody that you know it is the right time to do so, ask them. And then number two, when you do come to the conversation and you talk about this is what I need or this is what I want, make sure you have a yes from everyone. And bonus tip, notice if you are trying to tell yourself, oh, we can't be that strict in the household. We need to have less structure and more go with the flow. We're not a business in this household. We don't need to do things here like I do at work. But I want to remind you that businesses run efficiently and effectively because there is structure in place. So it is important to incorporate just a little bit of that into the flavor of your home life. It'll make things so much easier, so much more efficient and effective and fun. Things will run smoothly. And that is what a serious conversation or a true dialogue can be about. So no more of this. I talked to them about it. They should get it. I've repeated myself 10,000 times. They don't listen. They're not following through. They don't care. Stop it. <laughs> just, just stop. And let's have an actual dialogue instead. I hope this was supportive to you. Stop trying to talk to them about it. Have a conversation. I hope this supported you also, especially in knowing the difference between talking about it and having a conversation back and forth with an agreement on the end. Can't wait to hear what you thought about this and how you'll use the tips and tricks and tools. And until next time, I'll talk to you next time. Thanks for listening. And if you love this episode and know of someone else who's passionate about creating authentic relationships with people, please pass them on to me. It would mean the world to me if you'd help me get this cause and this message out to as many listeners as I can. So please, if you liked what you heard, I'd super appreciate it if you'd take 30 seconds and leave me a five-star review and share this with your friends. And until next time, show love always, in all ways. And may you discover that we're all surprisingly relatable.